Hi, in this video we're going to be learning the basics of the command line through using a command line interface tool, or a CLI. Now when I say basic, this doesn't mean that these commands are basic and there are advanced ones, but it only means that these are the fundamental commands uh, and these are the ones that you're going to be using 90% of the time. Things like creating and editing files and directories, uh, navigating around your file system and um, deleting stuff and and moving and copying stuff and, and a bunch of other things that you can do using the command line, which is faster than, uh, in a lot of cases, faster than using your mouse and keyboard. So it, it increases your productivity. Now for this video, I'm going, be, I'm going to be using the popular tool called Git Bash. And it's popular for a reason because uh, it installs both uh, the Bash shell on your machine and, and Git. Now the Bash shell is uh, the shell that allows you to use uh, Unix commands which you can find on Linux or any other Unix based system uh, and even on a Windows machine. Now it's better to learn the Unix commands because in most cases servers run uh, Linux so if you're if you're gonna manage a server you're gonna have to write Linux commands uh, at, a, uh, at one point or another so it's better to use Unix commands even on a Windows machine. So if you're on a Windows machine just go to getforwindows.org and download and install uh, git bash I've already got it downloaded and installed. If you're on a Linux, I believe you have these commands by default, but you can also inst uh, do apt get install bash and you're gonna have bash. And if you're on a Mac, um, I don't know, Google it. <laughs> I'm sure you can figure it out. So, uh, okay, so let's start using the command line. Okay, so now that you've got uh, git bash installed, you can just go on uh, to Windows, click on Windows and click bash, um, type bash rather, and you'll find git bash. And if you hit enter, uh, it's going to start this uh, this terminal window. Let's, re let's close this and let me make the text bigger here so you can see it clearly. Now this opens by default in your home directory, which is usually your, um, your user folder. So to find where which directory you're in right now you can run this command called pwd and it's going to give you uh for me right now i'm in my user folder so users ahmed and pwd stands for print working directory remember that so that you can actually not just memorize pwd it's easier to know that it stands for P print working directory and by the way guys i advise you to have a cheat sheet and write uh, some of these important commands and uh, right in front of them what they actually do. So in case you forget them or later you want to use and you're like, oh, what is that command I used last time? You can always refer to your cheat sheet, uh, which is really useful. That's just my suggestion. I think it's a good uh, thing to do. Okay, so let's do something. Okay, what do we want to do? Let's say we want to create a website, right? And we want to create a directory with all the files of this website in. Okay, we can go to the, our desktop by doing cd desktop because desktop is in your users folder and uh, cd stands for change directory so uh, whenever you want you can do cd and go to any directory you want so let's actually create our website our, our potential website so mkd is make directory and let's type the name of the directory which is website so now if i look here there's a f an empty folder called website we just created so to go into this again we can do cd website and now we're inside our website. Now our website needs an index.html, so let's create that. So we can do touch index.html. And before I hit enter, I want to open this. And if I hit enter here, it's gonna create an index.html, which is empty and has nothing inside of it. So let's say we wanted to create more files. We want to create a script.js file and a and a CSS style CSS file. We can create multiple files as well with touch. You can do script.js and styles.css or CSS. And there we go. We have both our files on the left uh, left hand side side. Now let's say we want to put our styles in a in a folder. Now obviously we're doing this on our local machine. So you might be like, why am I not clicking here and creating folders? Now this is faster and not all the time you're gonna have access to the files like this as a, a direct uh, access to your files. Sometimes you will have only 
um, shell access to your server instead of FTP access. So this is why, this is one of the reasons you should learn the terminal. Uh, okay, so let's say we wanted to create a folder and move our styles into it. So let's create a folder called styles. So make the styles. And now we want to move our styles into it. We can run this command called um, uh, mv to move our file into it. So we can do mv, which takes two things, the file and the directory. We can do mv styles.css and now we can give it uh, this directory. So styles, oops, styles. And now it's gonna move that and it's gonna go inside of the styles. So we can also actually give it a name. So if we move this back, let's quickly just move this here. If we, by the way, you can, if you wanna go back to your history, you can just do up and down arrows and you can see all the, the commands you ran. In case you didn't wanna type one again, you can just up arrow and like hit enter again. And um, one other useful thing in the command line is if you type some command, let's say I type move and I did styles and I put Z instead and I, I don't wanna like delete all of that and then start again. You can just control C, which will cancel this current command and you can just start typing a new one. So you can just control C. And if the console gets um, kind of cluttered like this, you can just run clear and you will clear the console. Okay, so let's say we wanted to know what files we have in this directory. We can run this command called ls, and ls gives us uh, lists all the files in white and directories in blue like this. So styles is a folder. Uh, let's say we wanted to get more information. We can do ls, and we give it this option la. Now this is gonna give us a bunch of information, like uh, you can, this is, whether you have write and read access as this user to this file, uh, who's the user that created this and um, these files and the size of the files and the time they were created and the names of the files. And these two, this dot is this current directory and the dot dot is the, direct the parent directory. Every directory has these two. So if we do cd dot dot, we're gonna go back to the desktop and now let's go back to the website. Let's say, actually, let's say I wanted to go to the to this styles from the website. Instead of typing cd website, enter, and then cd styles, we can just type this, cd website forward slash styles. And now we're in styles. And uh, we didn't have to type two commands. And to, let's say we wanted to go back two levels. We can type cd dot dot and then cd dot dot again. But that's too much. We can do this instead. So cd dot dot and and cd dot dot. And now we're, we've executed two commands in one line. Now and and uh, you can chain any number of commands you want. You can execute a hundred commands if you wanted. Uh, doesn't uh, make a, you know, you can execute any number of commands. So let's, let's see what other uses ls can be useful for. So let's say you had a lot of files and you didn't want to type ls because it's gonna list too many files. Let's say you just wanted to check whether you have an index.html file or not. So you can just do ls index.html and now it gives us uh, index.html. And if this, if this file doesn't exist, you can do like ls index to the html, it will say that no such file or directory. Okay, so let's clear the console and what can we do now? Let's say we we want to open this folder. So we wanna go and open the, the styles folder. We can do this thing. So we can do start styles and it will start this directory. Or we can just, uh, we can browse into styles. So cd styles and we can do start dot, which starts this current, current directory and opens it as a window. This is useful sometimes when you're, uh, when you wanna actually uh, move the files or something and you don't wanna use the command line, sometimes it's faster to copy files. Most times it's faster to copy files using a mouse and keyboard. If you're on a local machine, if you're on a server, you're gonna have to use these commands. Um, now you can always, uh, if, you, if you're not sure how to use a command, you can always do this. Let's say you're not sure how to use the command um, ls. You can do ls dash dash help and it will 
uh, print all this um, documentation telling you what flags you can use, uh, which are these options, and how to use. So it gives you like here ls option and file. It tells you a, big, a bunch a bunch of stuff that you need um, that you might find useful using some some commands. Okay, let's say we wanted to create some more files. Let's go back to our website and let's clear the command. And let's say we wanted to create. Uh, uh, let's say we wanted to create some files and then delete them. How do we, how we do we delete files? Okay, let's create. So I'm going to do touch text dot text, and I'm going to create another one called text two, and another one called text three. Okay, oops, I created a dot tx file, but it doesn't matter. So we have them right here. And let's say we want to delete the first one. We can do rm text dot txt, which stands for remove, and now it removes it. And this works as well on multiple files. We can do rm text two dot txt, and we give it that text three dot tx that we created, and now it's gonna delete uh, both of them. We can also do rm star, which deletes all files in this directory. But I'm not going to do that because I, I need these files to to do stuff on. We can uh, also remove directories. So if we wanted to remove styles, rm styles wouldn't work because it's a directory. But we can do the Windows. Actually, this is available on Windows as well. It's not just Unix. Remove directory uh, styles, and it's going to remove styles. And now we can make that directory again by doing make the styles and um, we can go into that styles and create a f another file called index.html and we can go back and we can do ls um, styles and we will we will give us the files that are inside of styles without us going inside of styles and type in ls um, now if we try to remove this directory now it's gonna fail because because this directory has it's not empty it has some files but what we can do is we can do rm and we give it this option of r and do styles and now it, del it deletes that directory with the files inside of it and r stands for recursive which means recursively apply this command to every file and directory inside of this directory that we've selected now let's say we wanted to create a file with some content that's easy. We can use this um, this greater than syntax, which can be used used to create some files. So we can do text dot text like this creates the file, and this by the way creates only one file. We can't do multiple because this is used to like combine files into multiple files into one. But I'm not gonna get into that because that's it's not useful at all. You'll never use that command. But what you will use, you can do this. So echo. Oops, echo. Let's say hello world and do greater than and we do uh, text to the txt and this will give us a text to file with the content saying hello world inside of it. Uh, we can also read this file from the command line using this command called cat. So cat text to the txt and it will give us the content of that file, which is hello world. Now I have this index.html file here, which is empty. So let's delete it. So rm index.html. And I have an index.html file in the desktop right here, which I want to bring in. So we can do that by let's cd back and let's do um, ls index.html to make sure that it's there. It's there. So it's here. We can do cp, which stands for copy, cp index.html into our folder, which is website. And we can even give it a different name. Now, let's say uh, website.html. Now, it's going to copy all that content from this index.html, which, by the way, we can see using cat. So, cat index.html. We have this basic HTML uh, stuff with the title and it's even indented and if we go inside of our website and we do cat website dot html and we find that it's exactly the same content because we copied it into it 
Now, if we delete this, so remove website.html, <coughs> and let's say we want to move this index.html, so cut and paste basically, we can just do mv index.html into our website directory. We can give it a name, or if we don't give it a name, it's going to give it the same name. So if we do this, now we have index.html here, and if we go to the desktop, that index.html is gone because it was moved. Okay, now let's say I wanted to edit something inside of this index.html. I wanted to change the title. We can use the vim text editor, uh, which is a cool command line text editor. So we can do vim index.html, and this will open up um, our index.html. That's by the, actually, I think I opened it in the wrong uh, directory. Yeah, in the desktop. And by the way, if you if you do vim, a file that doesn't exist, it's going to create it. So I just actually created an empty... Oh, I didn't. I didn't save. <laughs> I didn't create it. Okay, so if we here, inside of website, want to edit this, we can do... Um, actually, let's clear the console. And let's do vim index.html, which opens up our index.html. And it's even syntax highlighted. Let's say I want to change this title and... I wanted to call it, oops, I want to call it, uh, instead of title, I want to call it uh, my website. Now this is Vim. If, when you finish uh, typing stuff, you can, you can just click escape. And when you click escape, you can now hit a command that says whether you want to save or leave or whatever. So let's do colon. And by the way, you can see down here is typing colon x will save and exit and colon q will not save but now that we've made some changes if we do colon q it's going to complain because we didn't save the changes and we wanted to exit but we can force exit by doing q and exclamation mark which is going to exit without saving but we don't want to do that we want to save so let's do x x if i hit enter now the index has been edited if i do cat index.html we see that our title has changed to my website instead of uh, just title. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into Vim because I can make a, an entire video just about Vim. Uh, Vim will, uh, I suggest you only use Vim if you're um, on a server, you only have SSH access. But if you are on your local machine, there's no reason for you not to use like a text editor, which gives you way more functionality, which is going to make your editing way more productive. So let's say, I want to move, I want to create, I'm going to do this quickly. I'm going to create a directory here called new directory. I'm going to put all my files here. Now let's say I wanted to copy my files from that new directory to a different directory. So let's create this directory, call it make their different directory, like diff there, doesn't matter. And I wanted to copy all the content from inside of new there. I can just do this. CP and do new directory slash star which which means everything and give it this directory diff there now if i go to new there the files are still there if i go to diff there the files are copied into this and of course we're gonna we can do the same with uh, mv and let's say i ran a command and this i miss i made a mistake i run a command and this m command takes some time to execute and i want to leave it the, uh, I can run this command, uh, ignore the command for now if you don't understand this, it's just a command that takes some, some period of time. So if I run this, I'm like, oops, I didn't want to run this. You can interrupt it by doing control C and it just stops what, what it's doing. And if you want to leave the console, uh, like the command line itself, you can just type exit and it's going to close it. And I believe that's all the important commands that 
you need to learn on the command line interface. These are the ones you'll use 95% of the time. Sometimes you're gonna use maybe another command and then you can Google it and find it. And But these, generally speaking, these are the commands that you are gonna be using mostly. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you've learned uh, something at least. I hope you've learned a lot and I hope it's been enjoyable for you. And uh, if you like this video, please uh, consider dropping a like, uh, subscribing, and if you've you want to ask me anything or if you have criticism praise whatever feel free to um you know pour your heart out in the <laughs> command uh comment section and uh yeah thank you for watching and i'll see you soon bye